Hello, I'm Clyde with PT3D, and today we are going to disassemble the extruder assembly on the AnyCubic Chiron. And I apologize for the uh, video, it's a little uh, blurry. But what I want you to see primarily is we've just removed the PTFE tube from the extruder assembly and I apologize while I get the camera into adjustment. Um, it's very difficult to get this in place. Um, I'm using regular Torx head bits on this, not Allen's, which is what it recommends and what you should probably use to avoid uh, rounding out your screws. Um, Make to like to make a note that the uh, two top screws, the one that I'm doing now and the one I just did, those are the long screws on this, um, not the short screws, which I'll show you the difference. There's three, there's two different size screws for this. Um, the primary reason for taking this apart is because I had some powder in there from uh, doing a PLA print, and I had a jam in my nozzle which caused the gears to kind of chew up the material in the extruder which is definitely not a good thing so and this screw that I'm taking out right now is the short screw Uh, most of the stuff is going to stay in place when you pull the cover open, um, so don't worry too much. There's just enough pressure on the spring tensioner that I've got my hand on right now, and that kind of holds it in place. There's a little tiny like pin on the um, the adjustment arm side where you uh, press to uh, loosen it up so you can feed the filament through. Um, <coughs> but it does come out pretty easily. So, but you can still see how it works, and you can manipulate it while it's in this condition. Um, you just got to be careful that you don't lift up on it, otherwise it's going to go flying across the room on you. So when I lift this up, um, notice that I got my finger on the spring. Um, that's to keep the spring from, you know, just popping out and going somewhere else. And I just put it to the side. Um, I'm wiggling this swing or the adjustment arm on here to see if I could easily take this out and clean it, um, but I'd have to take the entire assembly off, which uh, means disconnecting it from the motor underneath, and I just didn't feel like doing that. Um, I don't have any indication that the stepper motor itself has failed at this point. I've just got the uh, indication that I'm not getting enough surface um, attention on the filament. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using a piece of PTFE tubing and I'm basically blowing through the other end. Um, I don't have a compressor, so this actually worked really well. Um, I recommend going with a shorter piece of PTFE tubing so you're not, like, killing yourself blowing through it. But, you know, it does work for getting the uh, most of the material and debris out of the extruder. This part, there's a little tiny lip, so when you're pushing the spring into its position, just make sure that that lines up with the outside of the housing. Um, there's like a little kind of, it's like a retainer of sorts. Um, it just keeps it from popping itself out. And there's just enough grip on there, so it keeps it from flying all over the place and becoming dislodged. Um, as you can see, the bearing that goes on top of the stepper motor um, is a little bit dirty. So I just wiped it off, and well, I blew it off too, to get rid of the extra chunkies that were on there. So just make sure that surface is clean. That way, there's nothing that gets it, you know, bound up in the uh, gears anymore. So as much foreign material as possible I could get out, I did, and then just replaced the cover. Um, I accidentally started trying to put the short screw in into the wrong hole, which you'll see here in just a second.
And yes, there's the culprit. That is a short screw. That is never going to engage the way it's supposed to, so I have to pull the cover off to retrieve it, unless you have a magnetically charged screw bit. Or, you know, driver tip, head, whatever. So, yep, lesson learned. Pay attention to the size screws that you're pulling out. And of course, I'm going to try and do it again, but I'm going to try and put the long screw in the short hole, which also doesn't work, unfortunately, which is good. So, yeah, just pay attention to, like, how far the screws go down. All those bolts should line up, you know, relatively speaking, for when you first engage them. It was kind of rewarding watching this kind of spin down into the hole. And again, I apologize for the video quality. Um, I will try to make sure that this uh, is uh, better in frame in focus next time. Um, I think you get the gist of the idea. Again, this is on the Anycubic Chiron. I'm still troubleshooting this, trying to figure out where my issue is. And my next video that I'm going to put out is a time-lapse video of my first test print after cleaning this, and it is not pretty. So I'd like to share with you my failures um, while I troubleshoot, just so you know that you're not alone. We all experience failures, and the best thing we can do is to continue moving forward. So as you notice, I uh, started these bolts, um, but I didn't completely tighten them. Um, I don't know that this is necessarily um, something you need to do. But this is something that I've been doing for many years when I tighten things like this with plates. Is uh, I get them just about where they're snug, and just to make sure that they all line up properly. And then once I'm sure they're in place, then I'll go through and do the final torquing. And that's pretty much it. Um, all you got to do now is just replace the PCFE tubing back into the compression collar and that's it. And then ideally this would be a working machine but as you'll see in the next video that is not the case. So I thank you for watching and taking the time to you know learn a little bit with me and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. So I will see you later.